I hope that has drawn your yeah. attention to this <laughs> very crucial disease that we want to talk about this morning. Now, the World Health Organization and United Nations have put out a lot of pieces on cancer, and I have captured a little piece this morning that I just want to read out to you before we even embark on our discussion this morning. Now it says here that cancer is a leading cause of death in children and adolescents. The likelihood of a child surviving a diagnosis of cancer depends on the country in which the child lives. So that tells you that if you're in Africa, there could be a problem, I would explain. Now it says here that in high income countries, more than 80% of children who have cancer can be cured or are cured. But in many low middle income countries, less than 30% of them are cured. And Ghana is part of the low middle income countries. So it means that if you take 100 children who may have cancer, only 30 of them can actually survive here in Ghana or in Africa. Now, there are so many reasons attributed to their survival. Now, the reasons for lower survival rates in lower middle income countries include delay, number one, delay in diagnosis, and inability to obtain an accurate diagnosis, inaccessible therapy, abandonment of treatment, because of course it is very, very expensive, and then death from toxic, uh, toxic side effects. So it means that if you are a child and you have cancer in Africa, your problems could be more aggravated if you compare your situation to another child who is probably in a developed country. This morning, there's so much to talk about when it comes to childhood cancer. And I have a lovely doctor here from Kolibu, Dr. Um, Ruth Sam. She's a pediatric resident at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. She's got many years of experience when it comes to childhood cancer, and she's got so much to tell us this morning, including exactly what it is, the variants, the effect it has on the children and even the parents and some of the loved ones who are surrounding all these cancer patients and exactly what you can do as a parent to be able to manage the situation. Good morning. How are you, darling? Hi, good morning. I'm doing well. Yourself? I'm, I'm not too good, but I am well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. It's Amen. just a flu. I'll be fine. Anyway, so as indicated, there's too much to talk about this morning, mm. but bring us the very basic education that we need. A lot of people watching me this morning may not even be aware that what their child has could even be cancer. Mm. So when we say childhood cancers or childhood cancer, what do we mean and what does it even look like? All right. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. So um, I want to start off by explaining what is cancer. I'm sure most of us have heard the word, but if we are asked, do you know what cancer is? You may not have an idea. So in the human body, we have cells. It's these cells that continue to multiply and causes us to grow. Now, these cells have controllers control points that keep them in check that say you should grow to this extent you shouldn't grow to this extent but sometimes these controls fail so then their growth gets out of hand mm. so when that occurs and you have uncontrolled growth of the cells in the body that's when you have a cancer mm. so cancer can occur in, in any part of the body, from the brain all the way to the feet, the everywhere, leg, everywhere, any part of the body. anywhere there is growth, mm. cancer can occur. I've heard many doctors say they cannot actually pinpoint one, two, three, or four things that possibly causes cancer. Is that correct? So, for if we should compare with adults, mm. you can even find some causes. For okay. example. Mm. Smoking predisposes you to getting lung cancer. Oh. Taking alcohol can predispose you to getting liver cancer. But for childhood cancers, that's children, mm. that's uh, people below the age of 19, mm. so from 0 to 18 mm. years, we cannot really tell what may be causing the cancer. Most of the causes are really on wow. So research has proposed that sometimes when you get infections like HIV, hepatitis, it can put you at risk. Sometimes if you are exposed to uh, pesticides, mm. chemicals used for farming, mm. it can put you at risk. Mm. Even genetic factors, because the cells have genes. That's what just um, you inherit from either your mom, or your, your dad. dad. 
So with that, we those are a few of the causes, but the more in, like the most of the cancers, we cannot tell exactly what the cause is. Especially when it's in children, Especially from when zero to 18. to 18. Yes, we, we cannot tell. Research is still ongoing mm. and mm. still no, yeah. not much information. I see. So let's just bring it down here to Africa. We're watching some other kids, their experiences and, and, and all of that. And I wish we could have gotten down to, you know, the communities where we have some of these patients, yes. or even in Kolebu, yes. where we have some of, of these patients. What does it look like? What's the level of suffering? Mm -hmm. Watching that video, it just reminded me of why we do what we do. Right. Having cancer is not a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. It is a very difficult journey. I mean, from the time that you don't even know what's wrong with your child, when they start having the symptoms, to the point where you even have the diagnosis, through the treatments, I mean, it just brings everything to a standstill within the family because now parents have to abandon their work to be with their children. And it takes a toll on the finances. It takes a toll on the, um, on the family structure. Marriages have broken down because of I cancer diagnosis, the pressure, the, pressure, the financial pressure, the financial pressure one parent has to be in hospital throughout and treatments can be up to two years what did you so, say treatments can be up to two years 24 months yes in the hospital so we have structures in place i mean we have a mother's hostel so when they are not actively receiving treatment mm. because some people come from very far exactly. away exactly we have two major centers and now we have other ones around but um, for example, in Agogo, in Holy Family, I think that's in Techiman, mm. um, now in Ho. But majority of the cases, people come from afar to Kolebu, go to Konfuanochi, and they, they cannot be going and coming. So we keep them in hospital during um, the treatment. Right. And then even during their stay, because they are away from work, some of the mothers are even taught how to do bead making, tie and die just to just keep to them to make ends meet, meet and like make ends meet and then when they even return back home they have some sort of trade they can fall on oh. so it is very difficult looking at imagine. it from various angles it's a very tough situation yes so doc i want us to take it from the symptoms mm -hmm. and then we can come to the different types of childhood cancer that we have what's the first thing to look out for if a child has cancer. Okay, so what we are advocating now is, as soon as you notice something about your child that you haven't seen before, as soon as you notice something about your child, as your child keeps complaining of a persistent headache, your child keeps saying, mommy, my tummy, your child is showing changes in behavior, your child is now dull. For the younger children, they may not be able to voice out their complaints, but you can see your child is now weak, dull, not plain as before. Maybe most of the time your child may even have a fever. Usually what we do is you may give some paracetamol at home, you may go to a pharmacy, buy some anti-malarial, your child is still not getting better. Please report to hospital. So any unusual complaints you find in your child, please report to hospital. Please do report to hospital as soon as possible. And with the different types of cancer, each one has its specific symptom it can give. So I want to start off by talking about the more common ones. The most common type of cancer I'm sure we may have heard before is leukemia. Leukemia is cancer of the blood, mm -mm. and it is the most common type of cancer we find in children. So with that, they can have symptoms like they are anemic. So like I said before, they may be weak, easily tired, complain of dizziness, a persistent headache. So those are weight loss. Weight loss is also a very significant factor to look out for. Also, around our ears, extending to our chin area, in our armpits and then our groin region, we have something there called lymph nodes. Yeah. Lymph nodes they help, swollen, right? yes, they can get swollen. So now I even encourage parents to become more proactive. Examine your children, pay attention to them. 
these swellings sometimes they can become very big they are not disappearing mm. you you must seek medical attention mm. as soon as possible also there's another common type of cancer called retinoblastoma. Okay. So this one has to do with cancer of the retina, which is found in the eye. eye. So it usually exhibits by, you see a white spot over where the black part should be. Now it's a white spot. Mm. It may not be um, clear, really but you take a picture of your child and now you see that there's a white spot covering the black. The black. You must report to hospital as soon as possible. You can see that now your child has a squint. What's usually called a leukemia, ah. if I should make it more understandable. So you notice that now your child has these signs and symptoms, you must report. You can also have the lymphomas. The, um, a common one is Beckett's lymphoma. Now you see that your child's jaw is now swollen. It's not reducing in size. You must report to the hospital as soon as possible. The child's abdomen, that's the tummy, now it's getting bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. You must report to hospital as soon as possible. So these are some of the signs and symptoms to look out for. But in general, as soon as you notice something that is unusual, please do seek medical attention. It's better you come and we tell you it's nothing mm -hmm. than rather sit on it at home because actually it may be worsening. Mm -hmm. And when it spreads, mm -hmm. So sometimes it can start from the eye, but it will spread to the brain, the spine, elsewhere. It can go to the liver, any other part of the body. And when it becomes that way, the prognosis and the outcome is poor. Mm. So like you said in the, before, yeah, in the introduction, in the introduction mm. one of the reasons why we don't get positive results is there's late presentation yeah. because people yeah. do not have an idea right. what it is mm. so by the time they come in now it's a bit too late and nothing much can be done i see it's a whole lot to contain listening to you it's it's, it's even too much for me to be able to break down mm -hmm. okay so tell me if a child is affected by cancer how long does it take for for all these signs and symptoms to be visible months no weeks it, it days? can be it can be weeks so we say if you have let's say a persistent fever of more than two weeks you mm. should start thinking mm. even with healthcare professionals mm. we always want to draw because unfortunately not all of us even think it's not the first thing we think exactly. about you know why i asked you because the, the the piece that i was reading from the united nations says mm -hmm. that especially in african countries the diagnosis is not always seen on time. Yes. So tell me, you as a doctor, is it the machines that we do not have here or the experts that we do not? What is it? Why, why don't we detect it early? Mm -hmm. So we've already talked about the fact that, first of all, people will not present early. Yeah. And also, sometimes we don't have the equipment mm. that we need. They are mostly located in the bigger facilities, so they wouldn't be available in the less or the rural areas mm. and when people can even assess it it's mm. quite expensive mm. so it's not everybody that is able to quickly have an mri done right there and then doc when you say expensive how expensive is is the diagnosis <laughs> g g give me a rough figure between is it anywhere between a thousand and ten thousand ghana cities for the diagnosis or it's less so really uh, a lot of tests go into the diagnosis okay. actually okay. so if i really should put a figure mm. to it it mm. means i'm going to have to calculate because okay. we have different tests okay. that we need to right. do but in your estimation is it about five thousand i can say five thousand it can be about five thousand i can say 5, wow 000. i see that's expensive it's not is. too many people would be able to afford that down here in africa yes so with the well child um, cancer organization mm. they help to support okay so in fact we know that parents do have financial challenges when it comes to these things so mm. we do support them sometimes we do take up the costs of their investigations and their drugs just to make sure that mm. we save the life of mm. the child mm. yes. i see we'll, we'll come to another initiative that the, gov the government of ghana has been able to help yes. with but now you've told us about signs and symptoms. The big question I know a lot of people will be asking this morning is, is it curable? So in high income countries, there are more equipments and then more medications. So 
from the statistics, up to 80%. Yeah, it, just like I said in the intro. Yes, it's oh. curable because they have different um, forms of treatment right. available. Mm. But over here, we are quite limited. So the figures are lower. Because we are already having about 20 to 30% of the patients coming in, now out of them, sometimes you can say another 20% are able to achieve actual cure because mm. by the time they come mm. it has spread and now it becomes more palliative mm -mm. yes mm -mm. take us through the treatment to to a point where somebody can or a child can actually be cured out of any of these cancers that you have mentioned when it comes to leukemia is there a cure at all or yes. we'll lose the child oh there's a cure yes cure. so take us through the process okay what, what, what would they have so, to entail um, I would want to start from when you first visit hospital okay. with that unusual symptom. The doctor will take a history, carry out an examination on you, and then the first set of uh, tests will be requested, including the full blood count, the liver function test, looking at your kidneys. Mm. We would then order some scans just to make sure that the major organs too are not affected at the moment. Mm. And then the more specific test that will be done would be the bone marrow aspiration. Mm. So for me to explain what I usually liken it to, you know when you take the chicken bone, like yeah. the drumstick, yeah. the inner part, exactly. that's what is called the yeah. bone marrow. Yeah. So the same thing is in our human body as well. We also have the bone marrow. So that's the factory where the blood cells ah. are produced. So we would take a small sample of that and then take it to the lab, look at it under the microscope. And that way we'll be able to see the actual cells and from that we can even make a diagnosis. But from there, we'd also have to check that it hasn't spread to other organs. We have to make sure we take some of the cerebrospinal fluid from the back okay. just to make sure that now it hasn't entered the central nervous system Spinal cord and all. yes okay. because all these things determine how intense the mm. treatment should be mm. it will determine the prognosis and the type of treatment mm. that must be given to mm. the patient mm. and these things you know as i've said it's simple here it's not that simple sometimes there are very few places where these labs can be done. Yeah. Sometimes you request the lab. It mm. takes so long to get the results, and the patient keeps dipping and dipping. Can all these results be obtained here in Ghana? Because I know some laboratories here in the country, after they take the samples, they fly the samples out, and then they wait for results for about two, three weeks, sometimes a month. Yes. Are, are all the results obtainable here in Ghana? So when we want to do the more specific tests, mm. if I should mention some of them, like a flow cytometry, mm. for instance, mm. that would give us more specific information yeah. about the type of cancer it is. Mm. We do have to fly that one out mm. of the country. Mm. But the others we are able to do here. Mm. But the number of centers that are able to do it mm. are, not, are not many. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's just say you've run all these tests. At the end of the day, this child that we are talking about has leukemia. What's the process of curing this child? So admitted immediately? Yes. Immediately. Immediately. Okay. Immediately. So the mainstay of treatment is chemotherapy. Okay. And then the kind of chemotherapy that will be given would be determined by the results from the other tests, okay. to the, whether it has spread and all that. You, we do what we call risk stratification. So you are placed in a category depending on your risk. Oh, so just, just as with adults, just as you, you um, uh, medical practitioners who say stage one, stage two, yes, stage three, yes, 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 it yes. is also diagnosed like that in children. Exactly. Oh, so exactly. it's the results that will determine which stage exactly. the child is at with the cancer. Mm -hmm. So is it the same stage one, stage two, or there are different terms for it? Okay, so it's still the same stage one, stage two, okay. but then depending on what type of cancer and right. then whatever you use, the factors that okay. are used to arrive at the okay. stage. Okay, yes. so please continue. And then, so from admission, we start with chemotherapy, so, and then do we progress? Yes, so we start with chemotherapy, so it's divided into different stages. Okay. Um, the child will not be on admission throughout the two years, like oh, I said before. Okay. So they usually come in, if the child is not too ill, sometimes they just come in, get their chemo, go back home. But you know, this chemotherapy, these are strong medications, mm. and they do have side effects. Ooh. They do, uh, the child in the video... Is it loss of hair in children as well? Yes. They also lose their hair. They do lose their hair. And I mean, losing your hair is a very intimate 
part you can see they are sad parents oh. are sad when they lose their hair you wake up and then your hair has fallen it's on the pillow you're going to examine your patients and your mom's main complaint is my child's hair is, oh. is, is falling off but it does grow back after the treatment okay. anyway okay but even beyond the physical side effects, mm. there are also psychological implications here. I mean, as young as they are, even the toddlers, they realize that I cannot play as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. And it's even worse in adolescents because they are mature enough to understand that there's something really oh, wrong with me. them. They even understand the idea of death. So they are wondering what's, what's going, going to happen. To yeah, what's going to happen to me? They know now they can't go to school. You can have a patient who is just about to write B, C, and now they have this diagnosis, so they cannot go ahead. So we do have clinical psychologists who come and interact with both the patients and their parents. And we have teachers on the ward who try and keep them up with their academic work even sometimes when they do need to take exams and mm. they are strong enough mm. schools are so benevolent they let them write their oh. exams in so we try and make it as uh, as, as easy, easy or as manageable possible, as possible know? because it's really really difficult mm. it's really difficult mm. they can even sometimes the effects of the chemo they get sores in, in their, their mouth. mouth they are not even able to swallow water so it's really tough. It's such a difficult condition. Yes. It Let's is. just say chemotherapy, surgery, and all that has been super successful. The child is declared cancer-free, goes home, continues with their lives. Is, is cancer recurrent? Yes, Jesus. it is. It it is. You just didn't say that. I d <laughs> it is recurrent. It is. It could come back again. It could. What could cause that? Also wow. unknown. Wow. Also unknown. In fact, some of the medications given for the cancer can also cause another type of cancer. <laughs> you <laughs> just can, didn't say I that. Know, you I just know. didn't say that. So hmm, you just have to look at the bigger picture, really. Oh, wow. Because it, it's difficult. It is. You are talking about the effects on the patient, the child, and I can imagine how hard that would be. How about the parents and other family members? Oh. How do they take it? You've been in the hospital. Yeah. What do they come to you with? So I actually want to use this opportunity to congratulate and then say they are doing so well. Mm. They are doing so well. You can see that it's not the best. Sometimes you can have a breastfeeding mother mm -hmm. and then the older child maybe who is now two has been diagnosed. So now they also have to be in hospital with the baby fending for a baby alone is not easy and now you're fending for a sick toddler i don't know how they do it wow they are they are some some parents are strong even for some it's their grandparents we have patients that maybe the parents are not able to we had one patient like that who was coming from the upper east mm. and the parents couldn't come it was the grandmother who would come mm. and all the errands she would be going back and forth and you can't help but admire mm. admire the yeah, strength they have yeah. yeah i see anyway so but do we have special centers here in ghana that take that would take care of such cases in children apart from kolebu are there special centers so we have Yes, so apart from Kolebu mm. and Konfanochi, mm. there are other centers that mm. now have um, mm. pediatric oncologists there. Okay. Those are the um, doctors that are actually specialized in taking care of kids with childhood cancer. Mm. So we have uh, what we call sh uh, shared care centers. We have one at Agogo, there's um, oh, yeah, the, the, um, Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, Hospital okay. um, Ho. Mm. Um, I can't remember the last one okay. right now, but they are able to also do it to a certain extent. Right. Sometimes it goes beyond them mm. because of the limited resources and mm. they still have to mm. refer to um, mm. us. Mm. Yes. Okay. The, the, uh, this will probably be my last and final question mm -hmm. to you. But early this year, we got some good news which was announced by the Vice President, mm. Mamadou, His Excellency Mamadou Baumia. And in that address or that announcement, he stated that now four um, different types of cancer including, if I am correct, the management of um, anemia 
and then the cost of is it hydroxy urea yes. is that correct yes so all that now is being borne by the national health insurance scheme mm. and we applauded governments for that initiative i think it was a step in the right mm. direction mm. but you being in kolebu how much help has that brought to you and the cancer patients okay so it's been a, a relief okay. to them because the financial aspect is what sometimes causes them to abandon treatment. Right. And these medications are expensive. These are medications they have to be on for up to two years or even more. So it's, it's been a relief. Mm. It's now in the initial yeah. stages. Yeah. So yeah. we are hoping that even beyond the four um, four cancers, cancers that yeah. it will extend beyond mm. that mm. and then... Um, things would just get better. How much pressure is on you and the cancer departments in Kolebu? Oh, there's a lot of pressure. So what do you need? We need if you more. were to meet the president <laughs> right now, if you if you oh. were to meet um, Honorable Okoboy, who is now wow. in charge of the National Health Insurance, what would you tell him this morning? He watches the show a lot. That's yes. your camera. What would you be telling them? Oh, we need... You need, need too more. many things. <laughs> <laughs> we need a bigger center. Mm. I wish we had a whole building mm. that was just for cancer treatment, more equipment, so that the test wouldn't have to take sometimes up to weeks. Um, the medications, sometimes we are limited because we have to now wait for it to be imported. Sometimes there's a delay. So more equipment, more, more infrastructure, more avenues for research. Oh, I could go on and so on. So that we can save more children. More children. Oh, wow. But what are the statistics looking like right now, especially when it comes to Kolebu? If you take 10 childhood um, cancer cases, how many survive now? How many oh, out of the 10? About two. Uh, just okay. about two. Yeah. Wow. This is 20%. As, as a nation, we can do better. Can and especially better. with the National Health Insurance, we can do better. I mean, it's a step in the right direction now that it's being catered for. Yes. But I think there's a whole lot more that yeah. we can do. Yeah. But I appreciate your time this morning for Thank the education for, Thank that you, you have brought me. us. I mean, ultimately, I just feel like this life is just God. Yes. It's just prayer and, and, and just God. So yes. may God continue to, to, to save us and give you strength to be able to take care of all these children in your care. Yeah. Dr. Ruth Sam, she's a pediatric resident at the Kolebu teaching hospital she joined us this morning on our discussion on childhood cancers thank you so much thank you we'll for be back me. to wrap up the show this is still tv3 new day mm -hmm.